Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's the Oracle of Tinem Kutu, and welcome back. Today we have got a um, high school problem. It's a, a problem that appeared in the preparatory examination grade 12, paper 1 of September 2019. It is a, given that it says, it says given a quadratic sequence 1, 6, 15, 28, write down the second difference, determine the empty term, calculate which term of the sequence equals 2701. So we have chosen to title this video sequences, quadratic sequences 1. This is a sequence and the difference it is to a series is that a sequence numbers are ordered and they have an underlying uh, pattern. You might not see it at, at, at first value but there is a pattern to it. And a series is uh, when we add the consecutive numbers of uh, a sequence like 1 plus 6 plus 15 plus 28 in that order it becomes a series. So this is a sequence and every time when you read a question the first thing that comes to your mind is what facts do you gather and what do those facts tell you and how do you deal with those facts in order to put yourself in a position to be able to tackle that problem. Here it says given quadratic sequence, given a quadratic sequence Given a quadratic sequence, the term the quadratic, what does that mean? Immediately you see quadratic, you know that uh, the terms of a quadratic sequence Nth term equals to a n squared plus b n plus c, where a is the coefficient of the n term squared, and b is the coefficient of n, and c is the constant. So for you to get any one of those numbers there. If you know what A, B, and C are, you can say for the first number we know it's the 1, so it will be 1 squared times A plus B times 1 plus C, it, will, it should give us 1. So that is what the term quadratic tells you when you are reading the question. And then the second question says write down the second difference. So whenever you read a question or whenever you are dealing with a question that says quadratic sequence, immediately it says quadratic sequence, you know that there is a constant second difference. And as an answer to question 2.1.1, here is how you get the second difference. So we can say here we can say first difference. So the first difference is the difference that you get when you subtract two numbers of the two consecutive numbers of the sequence starting with the right hand side number minus the left hand side number. So for instance, one and six, the first difference one 
would be 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. So let us align this so it looks neat. So we can say here So always make sure that you take the number on the right to subtract the number on the left so you follow the same pattern. So here we have 6 minus 1 equals to 5. And then you come to the second pair. And on the second pair it's 15 minus 6 which is equal to 9 and then on the third pair which is 28 minus 15 equals to 13 so these numbers here 5 9 13 are your first differences and then the second difference is what they want so here we can say second difference and Exactly the same fashion, we will look for the difference of two consecutive first differences, subtracting from the right hand side number, the one that is on the left. So here, our second difference would be 5, would be 9, nine minus 5. which is equal to 4 and then the next one would be 13 minus 9 which is equal to 4 so if you had more, you can actually make this neater by aligning it properly. So we can say here, so this four here, is what they are calling the second difference and if you had more terms for this sequence you would actually realize that this 4 is a common difference this second difference is indeed a common difference so we can then say Two point one point one. The second difference equals to four, 
and that question is answered and you know that it is common. So then 2.1.2 says determine the nth term So here we have said that the nth term is given by equation 1. So we are saying that if n is equal to 1, we have a bracket 1 squared plus b bracket 1 plus c is equal to the first term which is equal to 1 and at this point before we go any further I would like you to be aware of a very important fact of quadratic sequences once you are told that this is a quadratic sequence the first term, this first coefficient a, is always equal to half the second difference. And that is a fact I am going to prove it to you later after this, question, after the, this uh, exercise. And I will do it for three consecutive terms of a quadratic uh, sequence, arbitrary and I will prove to you that A is always equal to half the second difference. So the fact, I will write it here and put it in red and a star so that you can always remember. So it is for quadratic sequences the coefficient a equals half second difference. So it's half times second difference. This fact will make your work very easy and you should always remember this one. So in this case here A is equal to half times 4, which is equal to 2. So in other words, if you know what A is, you are only left with B and C, and you need just two equations in the two unknowns to get the two unknowns. If you pretend that you don't know A, you will need three equations in the three unknowns in order to get the three unknowns. But you might have a total time trying to get those three unknowns with three equations. So this fact makes our computations quite easy to, to deal with. So in other words, we are then saying 1 squared is 1 times a which is equal to 2 gives us 2 plus b plus c equals to 1 and therefore b plus c equals to 1 minus 2 which is equal to minus 1 and that gives us equation 2 just numbering from there so that you understand where this is coming from and then we say for the second term which is 6 we then say if n is equal to 6 we have if n is equal to 2, sorry, it's the second term, not the, the term itself. So n stands for the 
terms, this will be the first, second, third, fourth, so one, two, three, four. So if we say n is equal to two, we will have here a brackets two squared plus b brackets two plus c equals to the term itself, six. So we know that a is equal to two, and 2 squared is equal to 4, so 4 times 2, so this we can say 2 times 4 plus 2b plus c equals to 6, and this gives us 8 plus 2b plus c equals to 6, and therefore, 2b plus c equals to 6 minus 8, which is equal to minus 2, and that gives us our third equation. So basically, we solve these two equations simultaneously in order to get b and c. We already know what a is. And therefore, if we, here we say equation 3 minus equation 2, this would give us 2b minus b will give us b, and c minus c will give us 0, and then we minus 2, minus minus 1 will be equal to this, I will have to write so you can see what is going on. This is minus 2, minus 2, minus bracket minus 1, so that you clearly see where we are coming from. So minus 2 plus 1 would give us minus 1. And so we have the value of b, and once we have the value of b, we can use equation 2 using 2 with b equals to minus 1 we have minus 1 plus c is equal to minus 1 and therefore c is equal to 0. So then basically uh, as a solution to 2.2 we say the nth term of this quadratic sequence equals to our a is 2 so we have 2 n to the power 2 plus our b is minus 1 so it will be minus n and our c is equal to 0 so this gives us the nth term of our quadratic sequence and that question is done and then we we go to question 2.1.3 which says calculate which term of the sequence equals to 2701. We need to get the we need to get n for this number. So 
for 2.1 0.3 we need to calculate the term for the sequence that equals 2701 so we have 2n squared minus n is equal to 2701 so we can say 2n squared minus n minus 2701 is equal to 0 and we can call that equation 4 so we can refer to it as uh, equation 4 then this is a quadratic equation and we will solve it using the quadratic formula which is n is equal to minus b plus minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and our b equals to minus 1 our a equals to 2 and our c equals to 2701 so if you substitute these numbers into this number you will get your value for n so we can come to this side and say 2.1.3 so now we have n equals to our minus b, our b is minus 1, so it's minus minus 1, which will give us 1, plus or minus the square root of our b squared is minus 1 squared, which gives us 1, so it gives us 1, minus, uh, here we have the 4, bracket 2, bracket and our c is minus 2701 so it's better to put the minus there so that you do not get confused you will start uh, wondering what am i going to do with the square root of a negative number so that is a minus 2701 instead of just a 2701 so we have minus 2701 brackets and all of this over 2 times 2 our a is 2 so this is over 4 so then we have n equals to 1 plus minus the square root of 1 plus this becomes a plus because it's a negative multiplied by a negative and so we can say 4 times 2 times 2701 equals to 216 zero 08 all over 4 and this is equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 21609 over 4 so n equals to 1 plus or minus the square root of 21609 equals to 100, 147 all this over 4 and 1 minus 147 will give us a negative number and this sequence will not have a negative number so we will not consider that we are going to say 1 plus 147 
Therefore, our desired N is equal to 148, which is 1 plus 147 divided by 4, and that is equal to 37. So, this term here is the 37th term of the sequence. In other words, if you continue writing this sequence until you get to sequence to the uh, to number 37, you will get that number to be 2701. And this is uh, done. So basically, the three most important things for you to remember when you are dealing with quadratic sequences is the fact that once you see quadratic sequence, you know that the nth term is given by a n squared plus b n plus c. And the, then the next thing for you to remember is that for any quadratic sequences or any quadratic sequence, the coefficient a here is equal to half times the second difference. And for quadratic sequences, the second difference is always common. So now I'm going to prove to you that indeed the A coefficient of a quadratic uh, sequence is always equal to half of the second difference. Thank you. Uh, we are continuing with the, the preparatory examination, grade 12, paper 1, September of 2019, question that he, we answered. Uh, given a quadratic sequence, 1, 6, 15, 28, write down the second difference, determine the nth term, and calculate which term of the sequence equals 2, 7, 0, 1. In the solution of that question, I said to you that it is a matter of fact that for any quadratic sequence whose nth term is given by a n squared plus b n plus c, the coefficient a of the n squared is always equal to half of the second common difference. In other words, a is equal to half times the second difference of the quadratic sequence and perhaps that is the reason why in 2.1.1 they asked you to find the common difference or the second difference rather so they knew you were going to need it when you were determining the coefficients of the quadratic sequence a b and c so i promised you in that uh, solution that i'm going to prove to you that a is indeed equal to half of the second difference and that is what i am going to do right now so on your on the left hand side of the board you can see three numbers or three representations of three consecutive terms let us assume these are three consecutive terms of a quadratic sequence and to the left we have the term a bracket n minus 1 squared plus b bracket n minus 1 plus c in the middle we have the term a n squared plus b n plus c and on the right hand side we have a bracket n plus 1 squared plus b bracket n plus 1 plus c so what i'm going to do is i'm going to expand these two and then we find the first difference and then from there, we also find the second difference in order for us to come to the conclusion that A is equal to, to the second difference, to half the second difference. And the, I have written these uh, numbers in different colors just to spice up things so you can follow which one are we dealing with at any particular given time. So we will start with the a n minus 1 squared 
plus B bracket N minus 1 plus C. So we expand that and find the difference between this one and this one, or the middle term with the left hand side term. So here we can say we expand N minus 1. So it would be A bracket N squared minus 2N plus 1 plus BN minus B plus C which is equal to a n squared minus 2an plus a plus bn minus b plus c. So then here we have a n squared minus 2 a n plus a plus b n minus b plus c as our left hand team uh, expansion of that number there and for us to get the first difference between the second term and the left hand side term we then say If we can number these terms and say this is our term 1, this is our term 2, and this is our term 3. So then here we can say term 2 minus term 1. So this would give us a n squared plus b n plus c minus this term which is term 1 expanded this would give us minus 1 multiplied by this whole term that would give us minus a n squared plus 2 a n minus a minus b n plus b minus c and we can then here say this is equals to we can this cancels out with this and this cancels out with this and this cancels out with this. So in other words, we are left with the 2AN minus A. So this is equal to 2AN minus A. Then we can come here and say as part of our first difference We are saying second term minus first term equals to 2an minus a. We are going to do the same here in order to get this first difference where we say third term minus 
second term, what will that give us? So, for the third and the second term, first we expand the third term, which is a bracket n squared plus 2n plus 1 plus bn plus b plus c and this is equal to we multiply out there a n squared plus 2 a n plus a plus b n plus b plus c I hope you notice how I am expanding the quadratic factors. They are quite very easy to, to expand. For this one, you say n times n, which is n squared, and n times 1 is n times 2, 2n, two and 1 times 1 gives us 1. And for the one with the negative there, we say n times n is n squared, and then n times minus 1 is minus n times 2 minus 2n and then minus 1 times minus 1 gives us plus 1. Very simple and straightforward. And that is a trick that you can use in the examination in order to save time. You don't have to write two brackets and then expand them term by term and then end running the risk of making a mistake. So if you do it this way, it will save you time in the examination. So. Next, we say term 3 minus term 2. And here we have our term 3 is a n squared plus 2 a n plus a plus b n plus b plus c minus we multiply the second term by minus 1 so it will be minus 1 times a n squared this, that gives us minus a n squared minus b n minus c and this will give us the following so we can say this one cancels out with that one And the Bn cancels out with that one. And C cancels out with that one. And here, I think, yes, that's why um, I will left out a B here. So this is actually plus B, it's 2AN minus A plus B. So you have 2A minus A plus B. So here is a plus B. And sorry about that, but otherwise we are good. So here we have 2AN plus A plus B. This minus plus C cancels out with this minus C. So then what we have here is 2AN plus A plus b just to make sure that we we have all the terms together this is 2an minus a plus b 
and here we have 2am plus a plus b. So here your first difference would be 2am plus a plus b. And then now we find the second difference between these two and we can say here we are looking for the difference between these two So we can say here, yeah, second difference So we, for the second difference, we say 2am plus a plus b minus 2an minus a plus b so we have 2an plus a plus b and we say 2an minus a plus b multiplied uh, by minus 1 throughout so we can get the difference there, we then have minus 2 a n plus a minus b because we are simply saying minus 1 times 2 a n gives us minus 2 a n 1 times minus a gives us plus a and 1 minus 1 times b gives us minus b here it's a minus 1 times minus a, which is a negative times a negative, gives you a positive. And then we are saying second difference equals to. This 2an cancels out with the minus 2an and the plus b cancels out with the the minus b. So then we are left with plus a plus a which is equal to 2a. And therefore we have a equals to half times second term second difference So this is what we wanted to prove and it is done and this is always a fact. You have to remember this and you have to know it by heart that for any given quadratic sequence uh, the first coefficient of the sequence, the nth term of the sequence is half the second difference. And the, once you know that 
it makes your work very easy. So, we are going to combine this with the first part of the solution so that it uh, gels together well and you will always understand the reason why I used this effect. It is a province effect and uh, this question was uh, for metric students it is also a question that can be given to uh, IGSE uh, all level, uh, A-level, not O-level. It's a little bit advanced for all levelers but for a S-level and the advanced level, they can get uh, this kind of question. And at A-level, they can even be asked to prove that this is true. And also for first year uh, pre-calculus uh, students of mathematics, they can be asked to prove that, uh, show that the first coefficient of a quadratic sequence uh, is always equal to half the second difference. And the second difference is, 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 is always the common difference. So this is done and please like our videos, subscribe, share with your friends and let us talk. If you have got any comments, send them on YouTube and if you have got uh, any other questions of this similar nature which you would like me to deal with, feel free to get hold of me on my WhatsApp platform 081-4411-390 081-4411-390 and thank you.